because on this stream, we're going to be having a match. Yo, everyone's asking, where's Wet Chill? Yo, FX Sethlon versus, versus De Koopa Kid. Kid. I said De Koopa. De Koopa Kid. De Koopa Kid. De Koopa Kid. So we're going to be seeing Roy versus DDD. This is going to be exciting. This is a strange matchup, I think. De Koopa Kid maintaining that same color that Highland is not a fan of. Yeah. <laughs> I like this color. It's I think it's good. It reminds good. me of ice cream scoops. I think of Hugh Hefner. You know that works too. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine Hugh Hefner like just like chilling out in a pink bathroom <laughs> with the pink with, mallet. With the, <laughs> with the yeah. With, with, with the, the when you the, catch it with the lazy the hold, boy, you're holding down. Yeah, dude, when you're holding the down. <laughs> yeah, that's the technical term for yeah, it. Yeah, the crouch, the lazy boy. <laughs> that's what I call it. Oh Draw me like one of your French girls. Oh like. my god. <laughs> so it's FX Cephalon versus Dakupa Kid, Roy versus King DDD. We're seeing. Uh, you know, a battle of character who does not want to die against a character who will kill you at 30 if you are light enough. Yeah. So, I mean, with with Roy, we're used to, like, so crouch canceling in this game is not a problem, right? Right. This isn't really a thing. But, I mean, we're used to seeing Roy's doing things like down tilt, and then he breaks crouch or true crouch. But mm. in this game, we're used to seeing Roy using great normals, great spaces. Did he just re-grab that and throw that back at him? Yes, if you use the Gordo move again, the side B again, as it's flying back at you, you can catch it and throw it right back. That's sick. If it's been reflected. That's really cool. It's actually really, really smart of the development team to understand that, hey, if we're gonna give them this thing, this projectile that doesn't actually work, Ugh. we're gonna give them a way to countermeasure the countermeasure. Yo, fair, as he drops down, Fastball Fair slaps it right back into his face. That was sick. Ooh, so good punish on that up B, though. Oh, he's doing it again. Excellent job. He uses up B and then immediately cancels it by latching onto ledge. He tried to drop down there and back air them or nair him into the stage. Great option choices. I love what I'm seeing from Zethlon. He's doing a great job of going in there and pressuring really well. Ooh, I thought he was going to try to get to roll and then go for a, a, a grab there. The thing that I see uh, that Zethlon is doing a great job of is guessing when Dekubik is going to jump or whenever he's airborne and gets a, a great job of getting up bees. But he yeah. gets caught by that charge up smash. That's the second time that he used it. First time, not so not so well. That time, really good job of a, of a solid punish. He was just able to seal that stock, calling out. He get the extra charge because he called out the after Seth almost going to get up, he was going to use that spot dodge. Yeah. Just, that's so sick, dude. Beautiful. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so I love I love what I've been seeing so far from Cephalon, but he's going to have to see if he can finish off a stock. He has the aggression, oh but the Koopa God, Kid has the Oh, up air. That was beautiful. We're seeing that not only does D. Koopa Kid know when to throw out his Gordos, oh. but he knows how to convert off of them as well. He read the roll he and then down smash. Oh, he nearly got that. That's going to do it? I think he's too far. No, he's fine. No, no, no. He saved his jump, but he didn't have invincibility because he dropped down and was about to re-grab oh the ledge. Oh, my God. That was two times in this tournament that we've seen the Koopa get him with that dash attack onto the ledge. And that was 2-0. And the reason that it was 2 we saw it was very, Holy very, crap. very close up until that first stock was taken. But we know if you let DDD live, he is going to rack on that percent. Yeah, man. And... Letting DDD live is no, it's no difficult feat. He, he will live unless you try your hardest to destroy that stock. Yeah, man. I mean, Cephalon had great moments. He was definitely aware in the neutral. He, he saw like, he saw the Gordo coming out and was like, dog, let me drop down short hop fair, like super quick. And, and just slammed it back to his face. I feel like Cephalon did great when he rushed down to Koopa Kid and didn't let him have any chances. Doing a great job of mixing up the throws, mixing up the tech chases. That's it, honestly. Sometimes when you play against DDD, you have to play the patient game because he's one of the characters that doesn't have very many approach options. Right. If you can force DDD to come at you, he's going to have a bad time. But if you're coming at DDD and he can punish you for coming at him improperly, he can get a lot of mileage out of his punish game. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like that. And it doesn't help that when you only have a sword to deal with someone. Oh, oh my, just the jab able to catch that angle. He's charging up. No, he goes a bit too high. The actual thing with the neutral B, the hitbox is the flame on the actual neutral B. Yes. Which is the hitbox, not the sword itself. Oh, he oh tried to God, up B there the to contest Gordo. it. It was a bit too early. With it. I don't think the hitbox actually came out. Honestly, I think the person who takes this first stock is going to change the outcome of this match significantly. Yo. And see that? He caught it and was able to throw it back, but he didn't even want to throw it straight back at Cephalon. This is crazy. 
Sethlon just doing a great job there of holding space. He's, he's playing the real estate game. He's saying, this is my space. You shouldn't get to, to leave this space unless I get some sort of a punish. And spacing is hard. Like, in this game, where rolls don't get punished as, as easily, um, sometimes it's difficult to really hold space because a lot of options you have available to you to just move out of positions. So what's more important is getting the punish game, I feel like, in this game. Yeah. And oh, there we see. yes, the Lion-O. Yep, he landed on the platform right right above Seth Lon, and he was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of the He-Man. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit. I, I need to Thunder roast. Cats ho. I need to roast this bird. I need to roast this bird quickly. So I put him on a skewer, and then I just got some barbecue there. going. But Roy living. Back here? Oh, he tried. He tried. But I see, knew right now, we see Roy still alive at 138 and DDD at 68. It's a mirror of last game. Whoever takes the first stock just has so much momentum because neither of these characters actually have an easy time. Well, that's not true. Uh, Roy, usually has, <laughs> Roy usually has an easy time killing, but against DDD, that is a skill that is removed from his plate. But a skilled Roy. <laughs> <laughs> A skilled Roy can combo jab into up B. Down tilt takes him off the side. He's going to try to hold on to the edge there. He thought that the immobility would run out, and then he could catch him with the neutral B to send him off to the side again. He D needs to finish him D here. Could yes, he gets it. He was going for some nutty things to able to seal out that last stock by falling down with the, the swallow. Wasn't able to connect it, though. Seth Lon able to take that with the JV. Here's the theme of that match. Is Seth Lon just straight up saying, Gordos? We not having none of those. None He's, of them. He was reminded that Gordos are an illegitimate projectile. They are the bastard child <laughs> yeah. of the realm. They are the Jon Snows. <laughs> and just like that, he sent them back to the north. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, we're going into game three to see, you know, will, will D. Koopa Kid be able to adapt to Sethlon's adaptations, see how far this Yomi can go? Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Oh, okay. The Yomi goes to end of the battle. We're done. We Not leave. on the Smashville. No, we don't like the stage. I, I don't know. So, I felt like Sethlon did a lot better of a job of coming in, rushing down. And he he was a lot more aggressive that time around, but he also converted a lot better. Jabs to up Bs. Whenever he had offstage presence, he did it. He was mindful about it. He's like, he attempted to go out for back airs. I feel like it took him a second to understand the weight of DDD and how he was able to convert off of each hit. But now that he got, he's a little bit more used to where his moves send DDD, he can convert off them better. And beyond that, he's also more aware of when D. Koopa Kid wants to land. How often does he play this matchup? Uh, never. Nobody plays DDD. All, uh, the only other person that I know that plays DDD is like Iggy. He yeah. just like messes around with the character. Right. But I think Sethlon's been doing a great job of getting a, a lot better utilization out of Nair in this particular matchup. Because it's a it's a it's one of uh, Roy's moves that stays out a bit longer. When you think of the Swordsman in general, they have quick, very act, uh, active moves, but they don't linger. They're just quick, active moves. Right. And then they're done. And then you have recovery at the end. Right? When you do something like Nair, you have two chances for active frames to come out and to potentially hit a Gordo if you think it's going to come out in neutral. Right. Mm, back air. That was a little bit reachy out of D. Koopa but he knew if he got a charged up smash there, Rage might have taken him off the top. Seth Lund's been doing a good job of also. Oh, but now he's got the position. Oh, he nearly caught him. Excellent job of getting a bit of a punish. Still able to convert. Still able to put on that damage. And that's important because, again, it doesn't really matter too much. Oh. Who does the damage in in this matchup until uh -huh. somebody takes the first stock? So as long as Roy is at kill percent, you know, D Cooper Kid's looking fine at 153. I think they both have pretty good kill options. Um, I think we've seen like if if um, D Cooper Kid can get the forward tilt so strong and quick of an option out of Roy. Yeah, I that's that ain't that ain't me. Like, that's no. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> so he's going to try to catch him from below using a lot of these great aerials. Nair has been his go-to one. He hasn't really used much of the up airs. So oh, the Nair was trading right there. Yeah. Both of these guys have had a, a great job he when it comes to him so hard with that forward smash and was able to get the runaway back air. And now it's practically an even game. So this has been the new theme too, right? Is Cephalon staying at the ledge and just saying, I'm going to chill here and charge neutral B until your invulnerability runs out. I'm going to hit you the first frame that you lose it mm -hmm. and try to stuff you out early. And you saw Dekupa Kid doing the same things as well, but getting finished off there. Every time he was getting caught because Cephalon was starting to read the patterns of his get-ups. Mm -hmm. 
D Koopa Kid was not able to change his play style to play off beat. Yeah, you got to change it up. Throw a little bit of a curveball from time to time. Otherwise, guys like Cephalon are going to pick up on patterns. Which is a beautiful adaptation. Mm. 